So we've made it to episode six of Photo Redux, the video series where I take my photos from many, many years ago that are very, very tragic, probably should never see the light of day again, but then apply a fresh coat of paint with some fresh eyes and new software. So this episode takes place in New York City, my hometown, where I am from, where my family is still, and one of my favorite things whenever I go down to New York is to photograph on the subway and in the subway stations. If you've never been to New York and you find yourself going there, I highly recommend spending some time just roaming around the subways. Uh, those Some of those subway stations are really awesome with some beautiful architecture and kind of cool designs. Uh, there's some awesome uh, street performers down there that just do some amazing work uh, and are totally cool with taking photos of them. That's not what this episode's about, but if you do take photos of them, make sure you give them a little bit of a tip, show them that you appreciate it and pay it forward to other photographers. Um, so with this photo, I took it with the Canon 5D Mark II and the Canon 17 millimeter tilt shift lens. That was my favorite lens in terms of non fisheye. Uh, I love that lens. I mean, the 17 millimeter was my favorite. I had that one, I had the 24 and I had the 90 millimeter tilt shifts, because those were very important when I was doing commercial kind of architecture work, I needed that to get rectilinear lines. And as you'll see in this photo, the columns, even in the foreground are perfectly straight. Uh, there's no lens correction needed because that's what happens when you shift your lens. So the problem with this photo, um, like many other photos in this series, is that uh, I applied, for instance, in this case, tone mapping. Not only that, but I took nine brackets, which is way more than uh, I would say most anyone will ever need to get a good tone map photo. Uh, and it's just one of those things. The stylization is really, really strong, uh, over sharp and the typical kind of Brian 2009, 2010 uh, era photographer. So what I'd like to do is switch over to the computer and I'm gonna walk you through exactly what I did, what I don't like about that original photo and then we're gonna try something else. Uh, and this time we're actually using Adobe Lightroom CC, not classic, and there's a good reason for that which I'll explain in a second. But before we head over, I just wanna remind you, please hit a thumbs up if you like this video. Any questions will go down in the comments section and please be sure to subscribe so you get access to all future videos. All right, let's have some fun. All right, so you might notice something different here. We are working in Adobe Lightroom CC, which is the new version of Lightroom that Adobe announced a few months ago now at Adobe Max. And I'm working on the beta, but by the time this video is out, the update should have rolled out publicly. And one of the reasons why I want to use this instead of classic is because it brought in two very important features for me, split toning and the tone curve. Those were not there and they're here now, so I'm very excited. So let's check this out. So here is the photo that we started with, and just that scream. Yeah, so it's a bit much. The Here's the thing about the photo that I do like. I like the kind of depth of field, the way it kind of looks like these two columns in the foreground and the booth here um, are in focus, and then it renders out of focus as you go further back. But I am not a fan of this particular type of stylization. It's way over the top. And like some of the other episodes, uh, it's over sharpened uh, and just kind of, I don't know, it, it doesn't reflect uh, my kind of sense of style today. So uh, let's walk through. As you can see, I took uh, nine brackets. So back in the day when I was heavy, when I was deep in HDR, I used a product called a Promote Control. And it was this handheld remote device that I had kind of hanging off of my neck and it would allow me to uh, set as many brackets as I wanted to take at whatever uh, exposure interval or exposure increment. And because at the time the 5D Mark II, I think was limited to three or five. I can't remember. I think it was three, which really sucked. But this promote control uh, basically took over that responsibility. So I can take nine exposures, which is totally unnecessary here. So this is the zero exposure. Uh, this is kind of the the normal kind of exposure. And then here we're gonna go from the darkest, which is exposing for the highlights, and then we can stair step through uh, getting, uh, now we're starting to get shadow detail. And it's just, 
there's no need for this many brackets. In fact, there's no need to tone map at all because what I'm going to do is just work off of that zero exposure image uh, and that'll be that. So go back to the grid view here. This is the photo that I'm going to use. And what we'll do is we'll go to the develop view here um, by clicking on this button right there. And so for those of you that may not have started experimenting with Adobe Lightroom CC, especially with this update, uh, it brings back pretty much almost all of the major functions that you would want. Uh, it still doesn't have pano stitching or tone mapping HDR. For that, you'd have to work um, in classic. But for the most part, and I don't think it has camera calibration just yet. Uh, so if you really want to create some very, very fine-tuned presets where you're adjusting the camera calibration sliders, you'll need to go into classic. But for the most part, and I'm talking about the most part, like 90% of the lifting that you're going to do in the develop module, you can do it in uh, Lightroom CC. And in my opinion, it's a lot faster. Now, when this episode airs, I'm going to be in Japan and I set my own little goal where I'm only going to be using Lightroom CC uh, on my laptop as well as on my iPad and my iPhone. I'm not going to touch classic unless I absolutely have to do a pano stitch or a tone map. But Otherwise, everything is going to uh, sync into Lightroom CC and then go up to the cloud. And starting in 2018, that is my goal, is everything is going to go into Lightroom CC, sync to the cloud, and that's going to be my workflow going forward. So here you've got, here's the photo. Um, and for the most part, looking at the histogram, uh, everything's looking good. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is get a custom white balance. So I'll select the dropper here. We'll put it right on this T, get a nice white balance there. So uh, corrected for that just a little bit. Now, uh, as far as the exposure goes, the nice thing about Lightroom CC is that it actually supports the same uh, kind of hidden keyboard shortcuts as uh, Lightroom Classic. So in other videos, you might've seen me press and hold the option or alt key on Windows while dragging on certain sliders. You can do that here. So if I press the option key while clicking on highlights, and dragging, you can see there's the preview. And so what I'm gonna do is bring that until I barely see any dots. And that's looking good there. As far as shadows, I don't think I've got any clipped shadows. See, as I bring the shadows down, you start to see them clipping a little bit. So I'm gonna just kind of keep them where they were. And for the most part, this is a really good exposure. Looking at the histogram again, everything's looking good. Now what I will do is warm up the photo I know I did a custom white balance, but I kind of like a little bit more warmth uh, over there. And that's looking, I, I like that actually a lot. Now let's go ahead and we'll add a little bit of contrast. And then it's the sliders are repositioned a little bit. So normally I'd go to uh, my clarity, which is down here under effects. And this is matching a little bit more of what you'll find if you used the iOS app or the Android app. So uh, looking good here. Now here is the tone curve and I have it set here to point curve. I'm going to click and select medium contrast. And now I, I actually really like the kind of change it makes. It almost made the, the S curve that I want, uh, which is nice. I wouldn't have pushed the highlights as much. So I'm going to bring that down just a little bit, just around there. Let's open up the shadows. Just uh, right around, that's too much because up here I'm seeing it's opening up too much. So that's looking good there. And you can turn that on and off to see the difference. So here it adds a really nice contrast boost. Now we can scroll down, get to some split toning. So split toning, uh, the interface is very different than what you, you or experience in Lightroom Classic where you had uh, highlights, you had the hue and saturation for highlights, hue and saturation for shadows, and then the balance. Here, uh, you've got the hue and saturation are kind of controlled uh, by a single dot. So the first thing you would do is select what you want to control, whether it's the shadows or the highlights. And also you've got the two dots. Now each of these two dots correspond to sh highlights and shadows. So if I click on shadows, you see how that dot illuminates. Uh, so you can just start dragging. You don't have to necessarily hit highlights. Now, the way this works is when you go from left to right on either dot, that's the hue, that's the color that you're selecting. And then from top to bottom, or rather from bottom to top, 
that's the strength or saturation. So if you look right here at these two values, as I go from left to right, the saturation is not changing because I have it at the very bottom. The hue value is changing. So what I'm gonna do is go more towards uh, the yellow orange and then start kind of going upward a little bit. Somewhere right around there. And then with the shadows, I'm just gonna bring that to the kind of aqua blue and just kind of get it right there. Now, this is the balance slider, which you can see if I bring it to the left, it's gonna bias towards shadows. To the right, it's going towards highlights. So I'm gonna keep it right here and I'm gonna bring the strength of that down a little bit. Now I'm gonna go, I'm actually gonna add a little bit more warmth. And then I'm gonna go to the color mixer here. Uh, gonna select, I have it on color and we'll go to the blues and I'm gonna increase the saturation of the blues here. And then the luminance, you could see how, you see those pillars, the way they're kinda of getting brighter and darker. So I'm gonna keep them a little bit dark. I want them to be really rich. And then I'm gonna adjust the hue just to see how it affects the color. So I'm gonna bring that hue right around there. And let's go ahead, let's add a little bit of vibrance to the photo. And we will go here now to sharpening for a second. And now by default, the sharpening, all the sharpening tools are there, but they're hidden by a disclosure triangle. So if you click on that, there are our options. Just like before, if I press and hold on the option key while dragging on the sharpening, it's gonna show me a grayscale view, which makes it a little bit easier to see sharpening and over sharpening somewhere right around here. And then I'm gonna click on masking. And what I wanna do is remove the sharpening from flat areas until I get kind of an outline. Cool, so that's looking good. Now, I'm not done yet. Uh, the last thing I would probably do is add a vignette, but I wanna bring this into Photoshop for a second, and I wanna see if I can recreate that shallow depth of field look. So to do that, I'm gonna go to File, and then Edit in Photoshop. And here's the photo in Photoshop, just like we would have expected. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, duplicate this layer, so Command or Control J. And now what I'm gonna do is go to filter, blur gallery, and then we're gonna to go to tilt shift. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is bring that center point towards the bottom because I want my plane of focus to be the foreground. I want the bottom part to be in focus. So I'm gonna adjust the solid lines. That is kind of the edge of my sharp focus. Let's actually bring that down a little bit. Let's bring up the feather. Now this is way too strong. So I'm gonna take the blur amount, let's bring it down to like eight. Let's bring that feather down even more. Actually, I'm gonna bring the blur amount even more. It's a bit too, you don't want it to be like too fake. So that's good. Actually, let's bring it up to seven. Good, all right, so that's that I would say is a realistic uh, plane of focus uh, in a shallow depth of field. So with that, let's click on high quality and then click okay to return back to Photoshop. And now that we're in Photoshop, I'm just gonna create a layer mask, which is going to allow me to kind of paint back in focus. Cause remember, that's why we duped the layer. I've got the original kind of uh, image where everything's in focus. And now making sure I've got my brush selected uh, and I've got my uh, opacity at hundred and I'm, I have black as my foreground color. Let's go ahead here and just kind of start. You see what we're doing is we are bringing back focus in the plane where it should be in focus. So pretty much everything here needs to be in focus. So just kind of draw here. All right, now that we have pretty much, the for the most part, the mask done, what I can do is hit the backslash key, and this will show me any areas that I need to uh, make sure that I have covered. So pretty much everything here needs to be highlighted. And then we can hit backslash to hide it. And you can see, I mean, it does a pretty cool job of giving you that shallow depth of field effect. And if there's any area that you need to fix or you wanna bring back into focus or blur, just switch from uh, black as your foreground color to white. And of course, you know, I would spend a lot more time, typically what I would do is I would kind of zoom in and you know, draw like here, you can see that you have this weird transition. So I would press the X key and just kind of start fixing that just like that. And 
I would scan all of the edges, but because I don't want to spend too much time doing this, I've already kind of super fast forwarded through most of it. Uh, I just wanted to give you the effect of what I was doing uh, in order to get that shell depth of field. So normally, again, you'll want to make sure that uh, you properly gauge where that transition, that fall off is, and then go through the edges of everything to make sure that you have a clean mask. So, and of course you can also use um, a pen tool, uh, various selection tools uh, to control that mask. But here for the, the purposes here, I think it illustrates it really well. So with that, let's click save and we'll return back to Lightroom CC. And here's the updated photo. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is just go to vignette. Let's kind of add a really nice strong vignette here. And now if we go to the grid view, you know, here, this is kind of what we started with. <laughs> it's a bit much, right? And then kind of, I, I like this a lot better. Um, it just, to me, is a little bit cleaner. I still have that split toning effect, which I like uh, bringing a little bit of that warm tone into the highlights. Uh, but here, you know, this is just, I, I don't know what I was thinking. It looks like just a, another murder scene. Um, so... To me, this this is nice. I like this. This kind of represents, in terms of the way I would stylize this type of photo, this is accurate, um, and I think it represents uh, who I am as a photographer today. So with that, again, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Photo Redux. Please hit that thumbs up button. Let me know that you liked it. Leave any comments that you've got down below, and please hit that subscribe button so you get access to all videos in the future. All right, everyone. See you on the next one.